I'm going to talk about heat and ice, the difference between the two, when to use them, and more importantly, when not to use them. I can't tell you how many times I've had patients come into my office and ask them what they did to help take care of or treat their pain, and they did the wrong thing, only making it worse. Once a month, I have a new patient that comes in with an extremely acute episode of low back pain, and I ask them, well, what'd you do to try to take care of that? And they tell me, well, I fell asleep on a heating pad. And then they couldn't even move when they got up. The problem is the heat. The heat was used at the wrong time. If you use heat, improperly, you can make things a lot worse. The same with ice. So it's important that we learn the distinction between them and how to use them effectively. When we talk about the use of heat and ice for therapy and treating pain and conditions, the important factor is really blood flow and how that relates to heat and ice. When you use ice, you reduce blood flow, you constrict blood vessels. When you use heat, you increase blood flow, you dilate blood vessels. So it's important to understand the distinction between these two and when to use them. Ice is very important to use in the first stage of injury. So your inflammatory stage of injury is generally the first 72 hours. So if you have an acute injury, your body is going to respond with inflammation. It's going to increase blood flow to the area, and that's going to increase swelling, which in the end is going to increase some pain. So if we can apply some ice in an effective manner at the right times, we can reduce that inflammation, which is thereby going to reduce your pain and actually increase your healing speed as well. When utilizing ice, there's a couple important rules you want to adhere to. So it's really important to do it for the right amount of time and at the right frequency of time. So you never want an ice in area more than 20 minutes. If you do, your body will actually have a negative response and it'll actually dilate your blood vessels instead of constrict them. So it's that first 20 minutes we get the benefit out and then after that you take it off for at least 40 minutes to an hour before you do another round again. This is really important to follow. And if you just sit there and fall asleep on an ice pack or leave it on there for an hour, you can actually do the opposite of what you're trying to do, which is decrease inflammation. You can actually increase inflammation, which will again, increase your pain. In that first 72 hours of the injury, you can use ice multiple times. Generally, I'll tell my patients to, if it's really an acute injury, to use it five or six times in that day. Try to space it out by an hour or two at a time and no, no more than 20 minutes. Again, it's really important. Other rules to kind of pay attention to are Never apply ice directly to your skin. You always want some sort of thin layer in between it. Even a thin cotton shirt or a thin towel will be good to prevent frostbite and frostburn. Uh, it's really important that you don't just apply it directly to your skin for that entire time. When applying ice during that 20 minutes, there's a range of sensations you should experience. The first one is cold. The second one is burning. You should have a short period of actually burning sensation. That should be followed by an aching sensation, and then it should follow itself up by a numbing sensation that, at the end of that 20-minute phase. And that's actually the most important for reducing your pain and your inflammation. So now that we talked about ice, let's talk about heat. When do we use heat? Well, we used ice during the first 72 hours, the acute phase of that injury. Well, we're going to follow that up by starting to introduce some heat. Heat is good for chronic issues. So if you have a long-term issue, something that's been there a long time, several months, heat is generally a good idea for that. In the acute phase and then follow that up with the subacute phase of, an, of a new injury, you can start to apply heat depending on the situation. After that day four, day five, you can start to introduce heat into the situation. You don't want to apply too much at first and you only want to do it for shorter periods of time, about 30 minutes. So again, you don't want to fall asleep on that heating pad. So depending on the situation and the, the acuteness of the injury, you may need to ice it for more than three days. So three days might not be enough, and then it might be too early for heat. So if you still feel very inflamed or you have very sharp, acute pain, and especially if you have any radiating pain that goes down your leg, you do not want to put heat on it. It's too early to do that. So some people, some of my patients, I'll have them be doing icing for a couple of weeks before we start to even get to that heat phase. So this is really important. If you have that acute radiating or inflamed type of pain, don't put heat on it. It's not gonna help you. If anything, it's gonna make it worse. So for heat, we really wanna use that for more of those long-term issues we're talking about. Again, not the sharp pain, but when we kind of venture into that dull, achy sort of pain, and we're looking for tight muscles and we wanna deal with that, that's kind of where we wanna get into that heat. The heat is gonna help increase the pliability of that muscles, increase your flexibility, and therefore make you feel better in the long run. So you're looking for that dull, achy type of pain with the heat. So besides using ice and heat individually, you can actually use them together. This is called contrast therapy. And the way you should always do contrast therapy is to start with heat first and finish with ice. This has a lot to do with what we talked about before about dilating and constricting of blood vessels. So when you put the heat on, your blood vessels are gonna dilate and that's gonna increase a little more blood flow and a little more inflammation. Well, it's important not to let that build too high and that's why you put the ice on to decrease it. And what that actually creates is a pumping effect. So you actually dilate the blood vessel with the heat and then you constrict it with the ice. 
And doing that back and forth over time actually pumps fluid in and out of the area. It actually could be a very good option for reducing inflammation in someone. Generally with contrast therapy, we would have someone start to do this after the acute phase or after the, the strictly ice phase, which would be in that day four, day five range, if they're still experiencing some of that inflammation. We don't want them to solely put heat on because again, the heat is gonna increase inflammation. So that's the time we would use contrast therapy. So just a good safety tip when you're using heat and ice, there's a few people and a few situations where you should never use either one of them, particularly open wounds. You don't wanna place heat or ice directly on an open wound. Um, people that have circulatory problems or if they're on blood thinner medications, you should not use ice directly on the skin. It can cause issues. Other people that have poor sensation like peripheral neuropathy in diabetes type patients, we don't like to apply these things because they can end up with an issue because they're not really sensing what's going on in those areas. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned when to and when not to use heat and ice. It's really important that we use these things at the right time. And more importantly, like I said before, not to use certain things at certain times because you can make the situation worse. All right, that's it for today. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give us a like as well as share it with a friend that could use it. Also, don't forget to visit our website, backintelligence.com, where we teach you how you can manage your back pain from home using natural techniques, exercises, and products.